In this video I'm going to review the basic principles of binary numbers and I'm going to do that by comparing a binary number to a decimal number. So I'll begin with the decimal number since that's uh, the system that we're most familiar with and I'm going to choose a four digit decimal number. So I'm going to fill in four digits here. I'll just choose a random number. There's no particular significance to the number that I'm going to choose here. Uh, let's have 7,386. So uh, for reasons which will become clearer as we go along, I'm going to number the digits in this number, beginning with the rightmost or the lowest valued digit, what we sometimes call the least significant digit. Um, and I'm going to number that digit 0, uh, and number the next one digit 1, next one digit 2, and next one digit 3. So these are the numbers of my digits. So the number is basically just 7,386, but let's break down exactly what each digit represents here. So digit 0, which is 6 in this case, is a multiple of 10 to the power of 0. And that is the same as 6 times 1. So any number to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So 6 times 10 to the power of 0 is equal to 6 times 1. And that, of course, is just equal to 6. The next digit is digit 1. In this case, it's an 8. So this uh, represents 8 times 10 to the power of 1. And that's 8 times 10, which is 80. The next digit, digit 2, uh, in this case is a 3. And it represents 3 times 10 to the power of 2, or t 10 squared. So that's 3 times 10 times 10 which of course is 300. And then our final digit in this number, since it's a four digit number, is digit three. It happens to be a seven, and it represents seven times 10 to the power of three, which is seven times 10 times 10 times 10, or 7,000. So each of our digits represents a multiple of a different power of 10, uh, digit 0 is the multiple of 10 to the power of 0, digit 1 is the multiple of 10 to the power of 1, and so on. Now if I add up the contribution from each of my four digits here, 7000 plus 300 plus 80 plus 6, all of them added together gives us uh, the same number that we started out with. So 7386, which of course is a decimal number. Now we often refer to the decimal number system as base 10 and that means a couple of different things but uh, primarily what it means is that the values that we have available to us for each of the digits in the number come from a list of 10 possibilities. So the 10 possible values of each digit in a decimal number are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So 10 possibilities for each digit. Um, <clears throat> one consequence of that is that the numbers end up being multiples of different powers of 10. Um, another thing that we can uh, say about it is that if we were to look at the minimum value for our four digit number, um, what the minimum value that we could have got uh, would be obtained by choosing the smallest value for each digit. Now I'm not going to consider negative numbers here, we're just going to assume that these are unsigned integers that we're representing, um, meaning that they're all going to have values of zero or greater. So if I choose the smallest number that I can for each digit in my four digit number, I would just fill in zero here, everywhere, and that of course is equal to zero. Um, conversely, the maximum value that we could have got for our four digit decimal number would be obtained by choosing the biggest digit value that we could for all four digits, which is nine. Now that number, 9,999, is equal to 10,000 minus one, uh, which can also be written as 10 to the power of four minus one. So the biggest four digit decimal number we can have is equal to 10 to the power of four minus one. 
So that's our decimal number example. I'm going to do the same thing now for a four digit binary number and we'll see how the two number systems actually work in a very similar way. Uh, but there is one important difference. So I will choose at random a four digit binary number. Um, and the first thing that we need to observe about binary numbers is that the binary counting system or the binary number system is base two. And what that means is that the possible values for each digit come from a very short list, uh, which contains only two possibilities, zero and one. So whereas for a decimal number, there was 10 possible values for each digit, in binary numbers, there's only two possible values for each digit, zero and one. And that's what makes it a base two number system. So uh, I'm just gonna fill in some random digits here. Let's just choose one, zero, zero, one. And as before, I'm going to number my digits uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So beginning with the rightmost or the least significant digit. So these labels here will just help us to keep track of what each of these digits represents. Um, in binary numbers, incidentally, you will often hear, hear the, the individual digits referred to as bits. Um, so uh, if I use that term here, I just mean the same thing as a digit in a binary number. So bit zero here, or digit zero, which is one, is the multiple of two to the power of zero. So that's one times one. So again, any number to the power of zero is equal to one. So one times two to the power of zero is just one times one. That's equal to one. Bit one, uh, in this case happens to be zero. That is the multiple of two to the power of one. So that's zero times two. And that's zero. The next digit, digit two, or bit two, again it's a zero. Uh, that's the multiple of two to the power of two, which is zero times two times two, which is zero times four, that's zero. And finally, digit three, or bit three, in this case is a one. That is one times two to the power of three. So digit three or bit three is a multiple of two to the power of three. That's one times two times two times two, two to the power of three, which is equal to eight. Now, as before, if I add up the contribution from each of my four digits here, uh, I'll get the total value of the number. So eight plus zero plus zero plus one is equal to nine decimal. So the number that I originally wrote here as a four digit binary number, 1001, is just a different way of writing the number nine. So nine written as a decimal number is precisely the same number as 1001 written as a binary number. They're just two different ways of representing the same, uh, the same number. Um, as before, I would like to note the minimum and maximum values that we could have had for our four digit binary number. So the minimum, would be obtained by choosing the smallest digit value available for all four digits. So that, as before, that's zero. And that, of course, is just equal to zero. Uh, however, the maximum number that we could have had for our four digit binary number is obtained by filling in the biggest digit value that we can for each of the four digits. Now, the biggest value that we have available to us for each digit in a binary number is one. So if I fill in one, 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 one here, what that is equal to is one times one, plus one times two, plus one times four, plus one times eight. So these are all the powers of two, and that all adds up to be 15. Now, as I noted up here for the decimal number, there's a similar uh, property here. 15 is equal to 16 minus one, which is two to the power of four, minus one. So in a binary number, whatever number of digits you have um, can represent a range of numbers from zero up to two to the power of the number of digits you have minus one. So in this case, two to the power of four minus one is the biggest number we can represent with our four digit binary number. And that's it.